Hi, welcome to Wiki Architecture's Ramp Vignette Tutorial. Here is a solved uh, uh, design problem. I'll show you how to do this, uh, the steps in doing it, and any issues that you might come across. We'll go ahead and start out by me talking through what I've done here. Basically, the program asks you to connect the corridor to the lobby. There's a 30 inch difference in height between the lobby and the corridor, so you have to create a ramp. Here's the ramp system and a stair system. Uh, the code gives you what the requirements are for the ramp and the stair. Uh, you also have to create a separation between the corridor and the lobby that occurs within the corridor. So the separation is separation is achieved through a door and a wall. Um, the ramp needs to be 1 to 12 or less in slope. And so I do 1 to 12 because it's most efficient and it's easiest to do the math with. So for every one foot of length, the ramp changes uh, vertical vertical height by one inch. That's one to twelve. And so that's pretty easy. You put a landing here, which is an accessible landing. You do five feet of ramp, so that brings you down to 25 from 30. You do another, uh, what's the math on that, uh, 14 feet of ramp, uh, 16 feet of ramp, and you get down to nine inches. And then you do another nine feet of ramp, and then you're down to the lower level. Okay. Also, you have to put handrails up, so I'll show you how to do that. And um, that's pretty much the gist of this one. This is a fairly easy one if you follow the directions. Okay, let's go ahead and hit start over and we'll go through all the steps here. First thing you want to do is you want to draw your landing and just place it, you know, somewhere in here. And you can quickly draw it in there and then uh, and then adjust as necessary later. Your ramps per code, if you go to your code, you'll see that it needs to be at least three foot eight wide and that includes uh, projections for your railings and your hand, I'm sorry, your handrails. And the stairs also need to be three foot eight wide. So let's go ahead and draw some stairs in there. The stairs need to go in the east-west direction, so I'm selecting this lower one. And if, let's see, you can do between four and seven foot seven inch risers on the stairs. So let's go ahead and do six inch because that's within that uh, allowed amount by uh, the code. And so six times five number of risers. So six times five is 30. So that works. And let's make it uh, three foot eight, which is 44 inches wide. And let's make the tread 11 inches because treads uh, need to be 11 inch minimum. So we'll do the minimum to make it most efficient drop it in there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and set this landing at 30 inches. Just hit this up arrow 30 times. And this landing, oops, did a few, yep, did it a few too many times. It's trying to catch up with me. Wow, look at that. Great program. Let's hit cancel. Let's set that again. Let's hit it 30 times. Okay, there we are. That worked. Okay, let's zoom in now and make sure everything's lined up as it should be. Use the Move Adjust tool to align things as you should. And look at the bottom left of your screen. You can see that as you move and adjust, it'll tell you what the dimensions of each piece are. So remember, we always need to be at least 3 foot 8. So let's move those over at 3 foot 8. And treads need to be 11 inch minimum. So always make sure that that's at 11. Okay, as you can see, it lines up pretty nicely there, there, and there. So that will work. Let's go ahead and draw in some ramps. I want to do a ramp in the north-south direction first. I want to drop it in there and there. And this one needs to be about five feet because we need to leave a space for the landing at the wall. So go ahead and draw a five-foot ramp in. And then we'll zoom in and adjust as necessary like we did before. Okay, I'll zoom out. Now let's draw a landing there. And let's make the landing go all the way to the wall. Landings need to be a minimum of uh, 3 foot 8 for a 90 degree turn at a, a, a landing that turns 90 degree, which is also called a dog leg uh, landing. Um, but for a 180 degree turn at a landing, which would be a landing that was wider here and then turned back with the ramp, it would need to be a minimum of 5 by 5 to allow a, a turning radius for a wheelchair to fit in there. Okay, so we've we've put in a 5 foot 
length ramp, so that would bring this landing down to 25 inches. So let's go ahead and hit this and go to 25. And hit OK. And we want to go ahead and do the same thing now with uh, adding a ramp in the east-west direction that is 3 foot 8 here. And bring it all the way down. We need to leave room for a landing here as well, so let's do... Oh, it looks like probably 17 feet is going to be leaving us enough room for a landing. And let's draw a quick landing in there to make sure. 3 foot 8. No, it looks like we're going to actually have to make that... Use the Move Adjust tool. I think 16 is going to be our magic number here, the closest whole foot without without making that landing too small, because remember it needs to be 3 foot 8 in this direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and adjust that, and um, let's use the zoom tool and get in there a little closer. Make sure, oops, hit this move adjust to adjust things so that they line up with the walls like we want them to, and also make sure that we have a 3 foot 8 minimum. Okay, it looks like we have it. So this is, a what did I say, did I say 16 feet? Yeah, I did. So 16 minus 25, what is that? That it would be 9 feet. So let's set the elevation at 9 feet, or 9 inches, excuse me. Okay. And then finally, let's draw our last ramp. And this would be in the north-south direction, and 3 foot 8 in width, and 9 feet in length. And there we are. We have our ramp system, starting at 30, going down to 25, going down to 9, and down to 0. The ramp uh, generally leads you uh, in a nice way to the exit, so you don't have to double back or anything. The ramp does as well. Both of them have nice proximity to the exit. We also don't have some weird island in between the, the ramp and the stair. Uh, you want to avoid that if possible. Okay, let's, next thing let's do, let's go ahead and, before we forget, to put in our full height wall to separate out our corridor from our lobby and our door. And the uh, code says the door needs to be a minimum of 32 inches wide. So to achieve that, because um, you need a 32 inch clear, you actually need to put a 36 inch door in. That's very important. If you put a 32 inch door in, you're not going to meet the requirements of the code. Okay, so you zoom in a bit, make sure you've adjusted the, the door properly. And again, if you want to look at your code, there are requirements for a uh, clear area in front of the door, and we are meeting those requirements. Okay, so we've got what we need there. Let's draw in some handrails. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Draw tool and grab railing, and I'm going to just sketch it in really fast, and then we'll clean it up after, after we sketch it in. It's important to have railings everywhere. There's a stair, and it or a landing or a ramp and there's a change in elevation. The code allows you to uh, not have railings um, if there is a I think it's less than nine inch change in elevation. Uh, double check your code on that but it doesn't hurt if you do and I would recommend that any time at all that there's a change in elevation go ahead and have railings. You also need handrails which are shown the same way in this program as guardrails. Um, every place you've got a stair and every place you've got a, a ramp and also you need to show handrail extensions which are a foot at the top and the bottom of each stair and ramp. Okay, so I've drew, drawn them in as I've described on each ramp and each stair and at, at landings where required. So I'm going to just go ahead and zoom in and I'm going to adjust it. I've taken the liberty of drawing in a 4 inch wide rectangle um, in places and we'll use that to make sure that we're not encroaching upon um, our ramps and stairs more than 4 inches on each side. Okay, so I'm bringing the handrail to the edge of the, the ramp and it says 9-6, so I'm going to pull it out until it says 10-6 to get that 1 foot extension. Here I'm going to just kind of eyeball it. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe I'll go ahead and draw a rectangle here to make sure we're where we need to be. Okay, so we are just draw a four by four rectangle when we're within that. So use the move adjust tool to to um, adjust the handrail so it's at the end of the ramp. It says nine five. Let's bring it up to ten five. And zoom out now. Okay, so that portion is done. Let's zoom in here. Okay. You notice I've got the 
I've used this cursor tool and the cursor tool allows you if you click on it to have lines that go from one edge of the screen to the other and it's good for lining up with these ramps or uh, excuse me these railings and the best way to line these up when they connect is just like this so that they meet in the center just like that every time okay. use the move and adjust tool to clean the rest of these up and we'll be there move that up to 11 feet just these here. That's about three clicks is about what you want. If you you get used to it, you can do it by clicks. So if you'd start right here at the edge of the of the ramp, you do one, two, three. That's where you need it to be. You don't even have to measure with the, the squares if you don't want to. You get pretty good at that. Zoom in here and finish these up. I've taken the liberty to draw a square there earlier, but again, one, two, oops, one, two, three. Same thing here, one, two, three. And we'll just line these up like I showed you before. And we'll do the one, two, three method. One, two, three. And you can also double check that it has the same proportion here as here, then you know you're good. Let's go ahead and do our extensions. It says 311, so let's move that up to 411. That gives us our one foot, and here we'll just line up using our cursor. Here we want to make sure that um, get that that at least goes to this point. I'm going to just overlap it a little bit to be safe because it's an unusual condition. Let's clean these up, and we'll be set. Use the one two three method here. One two three, we're golden, and then the proportion is the same, so we're good there, and then we want to make sure we have our extension, five foot three, so it needs to be six foot three, Oops. six foot three, and here we want to have about one foot extension, and it's extended a bit here, so I'll do a little less, I'll just say eleven foot, eleven inches, excuse me, and we need to have our extension on this ramp as well. That needs to be 18, and we are there. Okay, let's do a do quick double check. We've got ramp and handrails on both sides. We've got landing with guardrail here, ramp with handrails on both sides, ramp with handrails on both sides with extensions. We have a guardrail here at the top. We've got a handrail with extensions on that stair. The stairs have to be minimum 44 inches, so if I go to this ID tool and click on it, You'll see it's three foot eight, which is 44 inches. Ramps need to be, or uh, 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 landings need to be 44 inches. Ramps need to be 44 inches. And looks like we've got everything set. Besides that, you just want to make sure your door swings in the direction of travel, and that your, uh, the at the base of your stair and your ramp, you've got a uh, free area for handicap access, which we do, and we don't have any uh, kind of unusual dead space between our our uh, stair and our ramps, which is good, and both our stair and our ramp point directly to the exit. So this looks like a good solution. I'll see you on the next video.